What is up YouTube? That's it here and today I'm proud to be bringing you guys an amazing anti-meta team. For those of you guys that have been playing a ton of singles, ranked and casual battles, I'm sure you guys have started to figure out that there is a meta or, you know, a common team or like a common play style that's been very prevalent on those formats. Well, today I'm going to be showing you guys a team that absolutely destroys those super bulky wall teams featuring like Mimikyu, Dragapult, Ferrothorn, and the like that have been so popular. So if those teams are giving you a lot of problems, you guys can use this team in your own games. There's going to be a team ID for this team as well as a team breakdown, a team review at the very end of the video. But like I said, there is a team ID in the description as well as links to our Discord server where we're giving away all of these Pokemon in their their base form so like we're gonna have Wooloos we're gonna have Litwicks we're gonna have uh I'm trying to remember what all their base forms are like Infidimps Magikarps uh come on I'm almost there I'm almost there Joltik and H Hakamo whatever the baby coma was we I have I have extras of all these Pokemon so if you guys need any of these Pokemon with the same natures that I'm using feel free to click the link to the discord it's in the description it'll take you to our very popular server we have a ton of people doing raids trades battles literally everything if you're looking for a great community feel free to join but enough about the discord let's actually talk about the team that we're using today this is like I said an anti-meta team it's a team that's great at beating those very very standard teams and actually has a lot of really unique tech for beating all the different standard teams it can beat the standard like double ghost Mimikyu Dragapult Ferrothorn bulky team but it can also beat other forms of weather using a variety of different max moves to reset the weather on very very specific Pokemon we're gonna be talking a little bit about dub wool just to start things off so you guys can get a crash course but we will be going into a full dive into how this team works at the very end of the video so if you want to see that in-depth dive you want to see us talk about every single move item nature ability everything break it down point by point and uh, you, you so you guys can actually figure out how to play this team be sure to stick around to the end of the video double though for those of you guys that don't know uh is a normal type so normal types are going to be immune to ghost type attacks and uh yeah, that was really distracting right there. It looks like I haven't used my control in a little bit. Anyways, yeah, double is immune to ghost type attacks, right? And so that's really, really good. But, you know, let's think about what makes those ghost Pokemon really so strong right now is that they have really good secondary typing. So Dragapult is a ghost dragon. Uh, Mimikyu is a ghost fairy. So uh, for both those Pokemon, one thing to note about them that they share in common besides their ghost typing is that they're physical attackers more predominantly. So, uh, you know, every single time we're going to see like Dragapult go in, a lot of his moves are physical attacks that make contact. Mimikyu uses player up. It's a physical move that makes contact. And if it's a, if it's a physical move and it's making contact, it's going to be go in, it's been going into Double's ability, which is Fluffy. So we're going to look at Fluffy right before we get into the game. Uh, it says right here, Fluffy has the damage taken from moves that make direct contact, uh, but doubles that of fire moves. So moves that are fire, so if I get hit with a flamethrower, it's pretty much acting as super effective. But one cool thing to note is if I get hit with like a Flare Blitz, well, I still get the damage reduction from Fluffy. So it's actually still like just getting neutral. So if it's a fire move that makes contact, it actually doesn't really mean anything extra on the Fluffy. So just to, just to throw that out there. But yeah, so Fluffy's going to be really, really good at helping me mitigate that damage. And then from there, we're going to be setting up some Swords Dances. We're going to go for some Body Slams, Wild Charges, and then Headbutts. And we're going to absolutely dumpster everyone on the ladder with Dub Wool. Uh, we also have a bunch of other really, really cool Pokemon on this team. We have a Scarf Chandler. Uh, I really am a fan of using at least one Scarf Pokemon in every single team, at least in this early stages of the meta. Uh, it's really good at checking... Uh, you know, the Dragapults, but this thing also has a really great matchup. It's a great Dynamax Pokemon. Uh, we're going to be going over move sets at the very end, but we're going to be using uh, a Grimmsnarl that has Bulk Up and Light Screen. This is a Prankster Grimmsnarl. I know you guys liked my Grimmsnarl in a previous video. This is an updated set. This has updated Eevees and everything, so it's going to be... All these Pokemon are like 100% perfect, by the way. So when you guys use this QR code... Sorry, not the QR code. When you use the Team ID, you guys are going to be getting a perfect team. We're using a Walkenberry Gyarados because I'm using my leftovers and my Citrus Bears and other items. So I actually just feel that using an item on Gyarados that makes it so I take less damage from a super effective electric attack can kind of just let me go up into a matchup against, like, let's say, like a Rotom or something. And if they want to just go for a Thunderbolt, well, they're not going to KO me and I can one-shot on my back. So I don't really think this item's going to be that impactful, but who knows? It's one of those really tech-choice items that it might win us a couple games. After that, we got Focus Sash, Galvantula. Galvantula's one of the Pokemon that brings this team together because it gets a move called Sticky Web, which pretty much places a Sticky Web on the board and says every single time an opponent's Pokemon enters the field and makes contact with that Sticky Web. It looks like someone just followed the channel while we're recording this video. Every time someone makes contact with a Sticky Web, it lowers their speed by one stage. So one thing that all the Pokemon on this team have in common is 
most of their speeds are in the 80s. Like Dubwool, I think Grimmsnarl, Gyarados, uh, Como. All those Pokemon have like kind of normal speeds. So if we fully EV train them in speed, if we make it so uh, we get a speed drop on our opponent's Pokemon, we can outspeed their Scarf users, we can outspeed their Dragapults and other, other really fast Pokemon, and make it so our min speed bulky Pokemon just have the advantage. So it's a very, very cool way to play, and I'm really excited to show Galvantula. And last but not least, we're going with our heavy hitter. We're using a Throat Spray Como-O. Como-O gets an attack that uh, takes 33% of its health, but gives it a plus one to all of its stats. And then after that, we're using a Throat Spray, which is an item that most people knew normally use on Toxtricity, which uh, says whenever you use a sound-based move, you get a 1.5 special attack boost. So we're using a special attacker Como with a Throat Spray. We're going to be doing so much damage, and I cannot wait to show you guys uh, how this team works. But before we get into the games, one last thing, uh, you know, a little bit of a question of the day. What type of trainer are you? Do you like to use standard teams, like the ones we're going to be fighting against, or do you like to use more anti-meta teams like this one, picking apart the strengths of your opponent's weaknesses, and, uh, you know, just capitalizing on the fact that they're expecting you to play one way and you trick them with something completely different or are you actually you know completely different do you like to use just uh, like all bug teams or all ghost teams or do you like to use really really hyper aggressive teams let me know in the comments below what type of trainer you think you are i'm really really interested in hearing everyone's uh you know different play styles so thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed the battles we're gonna hop right into it right now wish me luck here we go all right, guys, I have just one more small little thing to add here. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, yesterday, Nintendo servers were terrible. Uh, it was pretty much online, was down all day, which means I actually could not get any ranked battles because I could not connect to the internet. Like, seriously, right now, it's like 2 in the morning, and I'm trying to get content, but there's no way that the servers are going to be up before the video has to go live at 5 in the morning. So what I decided to do a couple hours ago, because I knew this was going to happen, uh, well, not knew it was going to happen, like, the servers have been down all day, and to uh, preemptively, like, cover up for that, I decided to just take today's team that you guys saw in the little team preview uh, onto the battle tree and do a Twitch live stream. I'm a Twitch partner. We stream uh, pretty regularly, almost daily at Twitch TV slash that's a plus one. There is a link to it in the description. Uh, you guys can all go join that Twitch channel. Definitely uh, do me a favor and check that out if you can. If you guys like competitive battles on Twitch, I feel I'm one of the best people uh, and the most consistent people. We like doing singles. We like doing viewer battles. We like doing VGC. Go check out that Twitch channel if you haven't yet. And uh, yeah, today's the, the bulk of today's video is just going to be highlights from that stream. We're on the battle tree, sorry, the battle tower. Uh, we're just going to be answering a ton of questions. So we had like hundreds of people in the stream and we're just answering questions. We're having a good time and I'm giving like a soft preview of how to play this team. And so I know I normally get like a lot of questions in the comments. I love your guys' comments, guys. Always hit me with more comments. And uh, uh, I answer like a lot of those comments. Like I answer like a lot of people's just like random questions. So if you guys have a question, if you guys watch this, it might actually get answered because I answered like rapid fire, like tons of questions. So uh, guys, I want to say thank you so much uh, for bearing with me through this time. Uh, as, as I really do hope that the servers get fixed tomorrow so we can do ranked tomorrow. But uh, it looks like, you know, there's only a couple hours left until the video has to go live and I still have to edit the rest of it. There's still the team review and there is still... Uh, you know, the team breakdown at the very end where I go over all my moves. So you guys are going to get a very extended introduction to this team, as well as as well as the kind of like a soft, funny way to see how it gets played in the Battle Tower. And then in the next video, we'll add the team rental code, as well as all the rest of the info. So guys, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, hopefully these server issues get fixed soon. Uh, but thank you guys for watching and enjoy the highlight. So I'm going to show you guys a cool strat with what this team is supposed to do. We're supposed to go Clanger Assault. Gives all of us a stat boost here. I can trade your Hidden Ability Dramatan. Okay. Toxapex is still gross. Toxapex is still good. Gengar and Haxorus. Uh, good. So what moves do you put on them? Uh, Gengar can use, like, Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb. I think you actually get Sludge Wave now. Uh, Will-O-Wisp. And I, I think that Taunt is still good in singles, Gengar. And Haxorus can use, like, Dragon Ant, Taunt, EQ, uh, and Outrage, or, like, uh, whatever Dragon Attacks you actually choose and use with it. So he's got that big boost, right? You still got those boosts. Did you guys see the boosts that we got? Did you see those boosts? Look at those boosts! What is Frost Moths? Uh, I believe I have a four IV one. Okay, that works. Can you can you only get hidden ability through raids? I think it's I think it's through raids. I think that's how you get well, that's how you get most of them. I mean from for just one start everything. Tarantar, Gyarados, Colossal, Toxapex, Hatterene, and Hatterene, yes. Hatterene is pretty good, right? I like Hatterene. It's one of my favorites. Um 
It sounds better. I think the last thing you need Hasty Steve is a, a U-turn Pokemon. So if you make that last Pokemon instead of one of those Hatterenes, uh, T-Tar, Gyarados, Colossal, Toxpex, Hatterene, and something that could be like a lead U-turn Pivotmon. Uh, note in my videos, I've used Flygon with U-Turn, I've used uh, Parting Shot, Silverly. Uh, a U-Turn Pokemon or a Volt, a Volt Switch Pokemon will actually help a lot. Is, alright, Gyarados, Raichu, Arcanine, Feral, Gardevoir, Hydreigon. I mean, that looks like, that's like a really good VGC 2018 team. I don't know if that stacks up. I will look at the Eevees though, I promise, Foxy. Hey, oh, my friend, how are you? I'm doing absolutely flawless zero train. Hope you're having a great night. Smashing is weak to ground. Should I replace Toxtricity with Rotom Wash? That's a great idea. That's perfect. I love I love it when players like can think for themselves. Like I love it. Like I give you a slight hint. I'm like, hey, you should probably add, you know, a ground resist. Sorry, uh, you know, like, yeah, a ground resist. And you're like, oh, I know the perfect one, and you do it yourself. Like, I love it. Love, love that proactive thinking. Do Hill and me stack with normal normal abilities? No. They're like you have one or the other. Might use Dragapult as U-Turn? Yep, that's a good idea. That's a great one. Use Dragapult as U-Turn. Yep, see, more proactive thinking. Yeah, hidden abilities do breed down if that's what someone wants. Think it's worth grinding for competitive mods right now, or should I wait for the smog on tiers to come out? I don't breed something and ends up being banned. Um, well, it depends. Are you going to play smog on format? Are you going to play battle spot singles? Are you going to play VGC? I think it depends on whatever format you're going to play. Uh, personally, I think you should just try and have fun and use the mods that you like. Uh, you know, the way it works is, do you guys know how mods get banned on smog on? Do you know how it works? Uh, Bubble rip you. How's it going? Uh, the way the way Pokemon get banned, right, is uh, it's not just like everyone agrees. No, there's a council. People vote on it. And the way you vote on it is they hold like a ladder that's that's special for that format, right? And everyone that plays and gets to a certain rating on this ladder gets to vote. I've been on a bunch of those councils before. And if you like a Pokemon and you don't want it to get banned, you do want it to get banned, you can take it as your job to defend or, you know, get rid of a Pokemon. So, when you're saying, like, should I be working to use a Pokemon, well, you could be working, like, 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 a, there's a Pokemon that I think's busted, right? I could work my butt off to get it and beat everyone with it, and then also go into that council and then vote to save it, right? Because that's, that's, if I'm winning, I want to keep winning. If I'm playing to my strengths, I want to keep playing to my strengths, right? Meta's fresh, you know it's going to be good or bad. Heck, that Squirrel Mount's probably the best Pokemon in the game. I'm not, it, you're not even wrong. It's like a Snorlax 2.0. Snorlax 2.0. This thing's an electric type, right? This is not good. This is good with double. Yo, my guy, how you doing? Loving the games. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I really like smog restrictions. Some of the bands are just too stupid. But they're not stupid. Like, they're, 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 there's a reason for it. Right? There is a reason for it. Can you maybe explain me a few things? Yeah, just let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what the questions are. All right, he's in the super mode. All right, this is not... Do we do we Dynamax? I'm, I'm, no, no, he's gonna use a special attack. It's okay. Rip. I'm glad he didn't max though. Glad to see I have so many viewers. Yeah, Swirl's good. Oh yeah, that thing's really good. If you guys haven't fought against it, it's it's like a Snorlax 2.0. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I honestly. Oh, thank you for the follow. Mineral Media. Mineral Media. Appreciate the follow, my friend. Personally, dislike Smog on overall. They're useful. For a bit of early learning, but overall, dislike their community. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of those communities that like try and teach, to, to try to like cap how good something can be. I think everything has potential, and I feel that like communities that try and say like this is the thing, it really just gatekeeps every single Pokemon's potential. And if you're gatekeeping the Pokemon's potential, you're gatekeeping your player's potential, and I just, I'm not a fan of that. You say Pokemon Smog makes the game less restrictive? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh. You know, tie tie Zilla three three three. That you're not you're not wrong. I'll say it right there. You're not wrong. They they what they're doing is they're doing it in an attempt to make it so more Pokemon can be played. They're banning things so the wider variety of Pokemon survive. That's true. But in doing so, what they're doing is they're promoting special types of play styles. So sure, more Pokemon can be used, but smog on teams generally uh go towards like bulkier wall games and that's cool if that's your play style but if you want to play hyper aggressive or you want to play with like a different meta it's a lot different smog trying to ban all dynamax is the whole point of this new game if they wanted to ban dynamax i'd be fine with that just saying i'd be fine with it snarl he's at that's a plus four right now holy moly that's a lot that's right yo that is right that's a that's a clip from a regional stream that i was a part of dynamax is dumb i don't think it's that dumb i don't think it's that dumb 
Predict how many more eggs before I get this 5, 6 IV Mimikyu. Yo, can you hook me up with the Mimikyu? Can you, can you please hook me up with the Mimikyu? Uh, I think it's gonna be 4 eggs. 4 is my guess. Have any bad trades yet? Have someone flash a shiny Pokemon, then mid-trade, it was another. I lost a good Pokemon. Be careful when trading with randoms. I don't trade people, really. Like, I, not really. Man, this sucks. I'm gonna body slam fish for Para. Dynamax Gyarados is too good. It's really good. Yo, we're outspeeding this Bisharp. Yo. Woo-woo. Popping off right now. Thunder Wave. Holy moly. He wants that speed control. Any thoughts on the special defense wall called Mantine? I've actually used Mantine. If you go to my YouTube channel and you type in Mantine, there's probably about 10 videos that will pop up. Mantine's a great Pokemon. Uh, I love Mantine. It's always been good in my opinion. So, do go check that out. One more opinion. Followings, Pelipper, Woody Colo, Toxicity, Grimmsnarl, Arcanine. A little weak to ground, but I think the Rancor can deal with the offensive pressure. I do not like Phalanx and doubles. That's just me. Uh, I haven't tested it myself, though. So, like, uh, it's an underdeveloped test. But I, I'm not a fan of Phalanx and doubles. Alright, let's see. Let's catch up. Yeah, I don't trust randoms yet. Every time I'm tempted to start competitive in the past, I've been easily and quickly deterred from starting comp because of the smog on community. I mean, well... The good news is, you can always join our community and our Discord! Our Discord is nothing like that, and everyone there just wants to have a good time. Can someone explain to me a few things in private chat would be happy? I mean, I can I mean, you could ask him right here. Yeah. I get like a sip. I, I, what, I've, I've answered all the questions. I can take a nice sip back, relax, and enjoy my beverage. What are some team archetypes? Very interesting competitive. Uh, just can't get six Pokemon I like and do much with. Also, what are cores? Yeah, well, Water, Grass, Fire, Core. Is it just cover weaknesses? Yeah, so cores are like, so you can play like a rain team. Or you can play like a, a double ghost sand team is really popular right now. There's really defensive cores. There's hail teams, rain teams, trick room teams. Uh, the way I always like to say it is like you pick a Pokemon. Maybe after this battle tower run or battle tree run, I'll run and I'll show you guys how I built this team. Yo, Boris is continuing the gifted sub they got from Barrel. That's awesome. Really like to see people continue those guys' subs. Put the subs up. Can I get my para soon? Can I get my para, para, paradise? Put the subs up. Subs up! My favorite uh, is your BS tro suffer through the entire match. Yep, that's Smogon. Uh... Plan for double Sue out with Simple Beam Psych Up. Phalanx with no retreat. Simple Beam on Phalanx with turn Sue out and a Psych Up after. I've actually used a lot of Sue Bat as well in my YouTube channel. There we go. We got the para, guys. We did it. I'm going to go for it. Is double better than Snorlax? It's not. Swords Dance, boys. Let's go. Finally perfected the team I've been building. Wow, I know I've, I know you sent me a link of it, but I haven't been able to check it out yet. I promise I'll check it out relatively soon. Bilmo310. Thank you for the follow. All right, it's time. Let's deal damage. SD, baby! Wild charge! Oh, we're so weak. <laughs> uh, I think it's fine. Showdown is testing a format with all the Pokemon in it, Megas and Z-moves. I think that'd be a fun format to play, like, once. I'd, I'd play that format for, like, for funsies. What's moveset on Confagoras? Uh, I think I said Will was Hex Shadow Ball. And curse doesn't it get trick room i don't i haven't really used that pokemon at all so i'm not the expert on that pokemon just yet i've never really been a big user of that guy we well, don't get that much recoil i mean it's fine you need like two swords dances to get rolling on that guy but like we were eating huge attacks on that bisharp like an absolute champ so bisharp goes down it really sucks for bisharp that it lost knockoff i feel i feel it losing it losing knockoff was like really really bad for it i could max here no uh, nope. Because if he snarls me, I'm just kind of dead. Yep, yeah, just going to flamethrower. And then I'll come up with Gyarados and Max there and win. This is a spoiler free stream. Can you speak on the fossils? Uh, they look dumb. <laughs> they look dumb, but they look cool. Uh, I haven't really used them all that yet. I think they. I think that there's vi there's viability. There's four, right? There's four. The, whatever one the water dragon one is, that's the one I'm most interested in using. Whichever one the water dragon is, that's what I want to use. All right. We got 150 people in here. That's hype. Yo, it's almost like we played the game, right? It's almost like we played the game. I know hackers exist. That's why I don't trust randoms usually. I've ever traded people over Discord. This gem for good mons to start breeding with. Is that riskly as well? Or should I not trade for mons to breed with to get competitive? I mean, as long as you're trading in my Discord, I think it's fine. Because I think all of us kind of just play the game uh, for fun. Yeah, that's so, right. that's I mean, right. 
even if you get like a hacked Pokemon, it's not gonna break your game. I, I, I'm not saying you should want those Pokemon, but like, it's not gonna break a game. It's just, that's, that's how it works. It's not gonna do anything bad. Credit Pokemon, should you focus on finding perfect Ivy's Eevees or Nature's and Abilities, which is easier to refine at the Battle Tower? The way it works is, I usually like to get my nature first, so like I like to get one of my breeding partners have like a good nature, right? Uh, after that, I'll start getting ivies. And so what I like to do is I like to get like a female with my nature, and then I'll get a male Pokemon that has really, really great ivies uh, through maybe like max raids or maybe a hidden ability, and then I'll start breeding them together, and then after like, you know, five or six eggs, I'll then have another, I'll have a new female that has most of the ivies passed from the original eggs, and then I'll put that one in, so it's probably like, a 3 IV female with a 5 IV male, and then from there, I just breed till I get a 4 or 5 IV Pokemon, and it's usually enough. Hopefully that answers Yeah, this is a team. You can see it right here. Uh, the way it works is I wanted to build a team, right, around... Well, I wanted to build a team that checked the meta, right? This is an anti-meta team. And so I, I've been playing a lot of games, making a lot of YouTube videos, and I was thinking to myself, like, man, Mimikyu's everywhere. Man, Dragapult is everywhere. Man, like, Toxapex, Ferrothorn, Hippodon, all those teams are everywhere. What's a team that I can make that can beat that? And so I really thought, like, what does all those teams, like, what's the biggest problem out of that team is the double ghost core, right? So the Mimikyu and the Dragapult are, like, the really big problems. Because the thing that checks the Mimikyu, then get, like, they check the Mimikyu, but they lose the Dragapult. And the thing that check the Dragapult, well, that's great, but then they lose the Mimikyu. So what's one Pokemon that can beat both of them? Uh, it's normally, normally always, Dragapults are physical. So I was like, I wanted to run a fluffy double, right? Like, I want to run a fluffy double and make it so those Pokemon can't one-shot me. And then I could probably try and wall them out, maybe a little bit. Uh, hopefully we can make some plays, get some sword stances up, and then just actually win from there. And so like, I was like, double, all right, cool. How do I supplement this Pokemon? Well, double has 88 base speed, and I wanted to make a team where I could go for, like, Zen Headbutts, get some flinches, get some Body Slam Paras. And so from there, I wanted to go with Galvantula. And so, sure, I'm adding a secondary fire weakness, because fluffy gives you a fire weakness. But uh, I have Sticky Web for... Um, Speed control. I have uh, focus sash make me live. I have energy ball for a little bit of coverage and then thunder boost by combat. It's very very good Pokemon. From there, since I have two fire weakness, I decided, man, I should probably add a Pokemon that again helps me check those ghost core and makes it cover up for my fire weakness. So I added a flash fire chandelier. Like it's very very good. Run Eldegoss, aka Ed Edelgard. That's a that's a good Pokemon. I actually have one that I used in my game. It's actually very very good. Anyways, from there we have chandelier and we have two Pokemon that are weak against fire. And I still wanted a secondary Pokemon to cover up and help me get my setup. Because remember, the whole team is built around Wooloo. We're going back. Now that we've covered up our weaknesses, we can go back and add a secondary Pokemon. So you can add, you can think about team building like stages. You know, think of a Pokemon, add a couple things to cover up for its weaknesses. Once you think you're safe, you then add a secondary Pokemon that like helps you, you know, achieve your goals. Because like your goals are to win with Wooloo. That's your original goal or, or double. So from there, I added the Grimmsnarl. So Grimmsnarl is going to be Prankster, and it has light screen and bulk up. So I can set a screen that can help the Wooloo. Uh, I can go bulk up, Spirit Break, Drain Punch. I have a Citrus Berry. Another very good Pokemon. This is a great lead. I would probably lead a lot of the time with this Grimmsnarl. Set those light screens, set those bulk ups, boosted by Prankster so I can get the boost off before uh, my opponent comes in and does everything. Do you EV train your Pokemon by battles or from vitamins? I EV train it by battles. Uh, takes a little bit of time, but I think it's okay. Uh, and then after that, so I have two more Pokemon. And at this point, like, cool, I have a great Woo Woo core, I have a great defensive core here, now I need Pokemon that can actually win me the game. I need a win condition, right? And so that's where Gyarados comes in. Gyarados is a win condition all by itself. It's probably one of the best Dynamax Pokemon in the game. It has Intimidate uh, for uh, neuter potential. It has, uh, you know, Rain potential on the Dynamax. It has rain, or Hail potential on the Ice Fang. Crunch is really good against the two Pokemon I mentioned earlier, being the Dragapult uh, and the Mimikyu. And so Gyarados just automatically, it's in a lot of my teams because it's just that dang good. Uh, and last but not least, the number one Umbro Uno win button is Como O. And you can see Como has that Clang Rest Soul, gives it one point, or is it one boost to all its stats. Uh, Clang Scales deals max damage. Uh, Flamethrower checks Ferrothorn. Flash Cannon checks the Mimikyu, who were originally trying to check. And one cool thing about all the Pokemon on this team is they have, you know, just run-of-the-mill basic speed tiering in like the 80s and a little bit in the 90s so like double chandelier grimmsnarl gyarados como oh, i'll have those 80-ish base speed tiering so if i set up the sticky web all of them go together so it sounds a lot easier than it was probably to make but like it's really not that hard to make like competitive teams so you got to think of an idea or think of a pokemon you want to use think of how you want to win with it add a couple of pokemon that help that pokemon you know win and then from there, add a secondary Pokemon 
that can help you, you know, cover up even more options, make yourself even safer, and then from there add two Pokemon to, like, push your your game home. Like, let's say if I want to start this team off by starting around Como O, I would have started this team off completely differently and had a completely different team. Um, but I wanted to really Brown Blue, so that's our double. There you go. All right, so we're going into our team review section. We're going to be taking a look at Dub Wolf first. This is where we actually break down all the Pokemon one at a time. We're talking about the value of their EV spreads, the value of their abilities, the value of their item choice, and everything involved, especially like their moves, and talk about the coverage options that each one offer. And we're going to talk about like all the good things you can actually soak up and learn. Like, this is the part of the video where you guys can actually learn a lot of things. So the first thing you want to see is that we have the leftovers on the double here. And I was actually thinking I wanted to go with a Rocky Helmet instead. Rocky Helmet, for those who don't know, it says whenever a move makes contact, uh, they make they take, like, a little bit of chip damage. Uh, I think it's, like, a an eighth, maybe? Maybe, like, a twelfth or something like that. Anyways, they take a little bit of chip damage. Like, if I were to get hit with, uh, you know, a body slam, they would take a little bit of chip damage, like a player if they take chip damage. So I really wanted to go with that, right? Because remember, our fluffy ability says it halves the damage taken from moves that make direct contact. So that sounds like a win-win. Like, I take reduced damage, and then you take damage on top of it? That sounds super cool. But in reality, what would happen is they're just gonna... All of our opponents that are actually any good are really gonna try to avoid interacting with our fluffy at all they're gonna use special attacks they're gonna use moves that don't make contact like earthquake and the good players are gonna try to avoid the fluffy but uh so that's why i actually went with the leftovers you can see i went with the leftovers instead i think the leftovers actually provides a lot more sustainability for our set when we actually get into the set and talk about it uh you're gonna realize that i think leftovers is the correct choice on this pokemon so uh you can see our ev spread is hp defense i think there's a lot to talk about here uh i probably could take a lot of those points out of defense out put i could probably put about 30 or 40 in special d and i could probably put about 60 to 80 ish in speed because i feel there's a lot of speed tiering things that you can get this pokemon has an 88 base speed and because we're using a sticky web uh galvantula we can actually like outspeed a lot of pokemon when they're at minus one so i think there is value there if we were to expand upon this team in future videos uh, that's definitely something I'd be interested in doing. I think I looked it up and I think it's like 108 base. I think it's like 108 EVs to outspeed a Jolly Mimikyu when Mimikyu's at minus one. Um, it's a lot of investment and I don't know if it's worth it, but like that's what I want to talk about. Like there's always crazy things. You don't need to go 252, 252. Like that's what we're doing in this week in our videos because we need to get these videos out very fast. But once we start to fine tune things, you're going to find really, really advanced EV spreads, especially on this channel. So uh, stick, stick, uh, Stick tuned? That's not a, that's not a word. Stay tuned. There we go. Stay tuned for that. Uh, you also note that I'm using Max Dynamax level on all these Pokemon. Uh, even in the code you guys are going to be getting, all these Pokemon finally have Max Dynamax level, so you can start using them in your own games, using them in the Battle Tower, and uh, using them in Ranked, and you will absolutely be able to get that huge HP boost off the Max Dynamax. So it's a bit of a grind for me to make all these teams daily, but I hope you guys do appreciate it. After that, we're going to look at our moveset. We do have Swords Dance, Zen Headbutt, Wild Charge, and Body Slam. And I want to run down this thing for those of you guys that watch a lot of my videos. One thing you can always expect me to do, there's actually an order that I like to keep all these moves in. So what I like to do is I like to use uh, setup moves, you know, protects, toxics, uh, substitutes, whatever, ha what have you. Moves that don't deal damage, I like to put at the top. That's just how I like to do it. I like to organize it like that. And then from there, I make all of my moves under it incrementally stronger. We see an 80 base. We see a 90 base. And even though this says 85, it's actually stronger thanks to the same type attack boost or the stab boost. So I'm going to do that. I do that on all my Pokemon. Uh, we can see the Chandelure. Look, a setup support move. Then a 90 move, then an 80 stab, which is stronger than 90, goes up to 120, and then a 90 stab, which is stronger than an 80 stab. So you guys can always expect that whenever you're just watching my games and, uh, you know, just watching the battles and you're like, oh man, that's his move set when you're like just watching. Note that the moves on the bottom are always the ones on the, are always the strongest one based off of like stab or, or whatever. So just, just be on the lookout for that. Hopefully hopefully that was insightful. And uh, same thing, when you look at like, my uh, rental teams and everything like that, the ones on the bottom are always the strongest. They get incrementally stronger. But let's talk about Wulu. It's coverage, or double. I always call this thing Wulu just because I think Wulu is way cooler. But yeah, Swords Dance... Man, such a good, such a good attack. It's a uh, TR in this game for 2,000, I think, in the wild area. It says a frantic dance to uplift the fighting spirit. This sharply raises the attack stat. Woo does not have an amazing attack stat, but after one or two swords dances, you're going to one-shot pretty much everything. If you're going to impair this thing's attack stat to any other Pokemon in the game, you can compare it to a Mimikyu. So if you guys are having a lot of problems dealing with Mimikyu's on ladder, they set up one swords dance to sweep your team. 
Wulu can pretty much do the same thing. Uh, Zen Headbutt is pretty decent coverage, I would say. Has a 20% chance to flinch the opponent, but it also can miss. I would not say I like this move. I really thought that it got Iron Head when I first started building this team. I was very... Uh, Sad to see that it didn't. So we have to use Zen Headbutt. Uh, Wild Charge is a 90 move, but it gives you Recoil. So we have Leftovers to mitigate some of that, but Recoil is not really what we're about. One cool thing is we can hit uh, very popular Pokemon like Pelipper and Gyarados, but again, we're taking a lot of Recoil in the process. And last but not least, Body Slam is our base uh, stab move. Body Slam, for those who don't know, has a 30% chance to paralyze. It deals double damage and automatically hits Pokemon that are minimized. A lot of people probably don't know that. And, uh, yeah, it, it's just a really, really, really good move. I could go with Facade on there. I could go with Double Edge. I could even go with Mega Kick, but I think Body Slam, the Pokemon that get Body Slam and can stab Body Slam are highly underrated. So, very, very cool set. Uh, the only other options it really gets for physical moves are Body Press. And with the way we were running it, I needed to have a way to like actually hit Mimikyu's and uh, what was it? Dragapult. So like we had to go Zen Headbutt. It also gets payback, but I didn't really feel I wanted to go the payback route since I am using Sticky Web set. So I plan on outspeeding things. And so I don't think that payback would be the best, but I do really like this moveset. I do really like this Pokemon and I can't wait to optimize it more in the future and expand upon the tech that we've discovered today. So the next Pokemon we're looking at is going to be... It's going to be Chandelure. So Chandelure, for the don't, those of you guys that don't know, is a very, very good Pokemon. I've used it in previous videos, and I think it's so good that this Pokemon's action in the game. It has an above-average speed tiering, and we are holding a Choice Scarf, so it can uh, outspeed things like Dragapults. It can outspeed all the other Ghost types. I think a Scarf Ghost Pokemon is so, so good right now, and you guys should definitely try it in your games if you haven't yet. Uh, we can look at our Eevees here. Uh, we're using full special attack speed and we're timid. Uh, we are a timid. Uh, I just want to review for a, for a sec. We're actually running a careful uh, on this double. Careful is actually really important on this set uh, because it, if you max, sorry, if your opponent maxes with like a max Dragapult, you can live like a special attack boosted max Worm Wind uh, by just going careful. So you, you actually want to go get that little bit of special D investment with careful. But anyways, back to Chandelure. Uh, we are going full timid on this one. Full speed, full uh, special attack right here. Definitely amazing Pokemon. Uh, Flash Fire is one of the reasons why we're actually using this Pokemon. Over something like a Gengar, over something like a Dragapult. Flash Fire, Flash Fire powers up the Pokemon's fire type moves if hit by one. It also nullifies that damage. So if you have if you have your double out here, if you have your boy sitting out here, and uh, you know he has that weakness right to those fire type attacks thanks to this fluffy ability, or you have like Galvantula hanging out somewhere and Galvantula is a bug type it has that weakness to fire you can always just switch in you can always just switch in Chandelier get that flash fire boost nullify that damage and make your moves hit like an absolute truck and it does hit like a truck this Pokemon is so good look at our moves here uh we have trick and trick is a very unique move right uh, remember there's a choice scarf monster there's not really that many options you could do like I could put dark pulse I think it probably gets like psychic but trick is really really good at neutering walls right the user catches the target off guard and swaps its held item so if you have like a Corsola, for example, a Pokemon that has to hold Eviolite to be really bulky. I can trick, I can give you my Choice Scarf, and I'm going to take your Eviolite. And on a Pokemon like that, they don't really want a Choice Scarf. Like, they need to use all their moves. Same thing. Ferrothorn, Toxapex, uh, Hippodon. They need to use all of their moves, not just one. So having a trick on a Choice item Pokemon is actually really, really good tech, and it's highly underrated. If you guys have never seen Trick before, like... Expect to see a lot of this on a lot of choice uh, Pokemon because it's very, very, very good. After that, we have Energy Ball. Uh, Energy Ball is a 90 base power move that lowers, has a 10% chance to lower their special D. I'm not really a huge fan of this, but if you look at Chandler's moveset, right, we have like Flamethrower and Shadow Ball. Uh, we technically can struggle with some very popular like rock leads and like potentially like ground Pokemon. So against a Pokemon like Tyranitar, for example, we ain't got nothing against Tyranitar, but we could potentially max and go for like of uh, max overgrowth or whatever that attack is and do like 50 60 70 percent to a tyranitar so same thing goes against like hippodon this uh it's not the best coverage in the world but like if we weren't running a choice item i wouldn't say run energy ball but since we are running a choice item we have to use mostly attacking moves uh you might as well go for the uh, energy ball because you're gonna be able to use more of it than you would actually think this is also really good against pokemon like like lapras and other big water types and stuff like that too uh great against like inteleon this is probably i'm pretty sure it's one shots an inteleon and we outspeed the inteleon because we're choice scarfed last but not least uh, we have the last two moves shadow ball flamethrower just great stab moves 80 base 90 base 
just uh, you know plays to our strengths. Ghost Fire, great coverage. Uh, with the supplement of Energy Ball and Trick, we have a very, very strong Pokemon, I think. And uh, let's see up next. Up next, we got our boy Grimmsnarl. Uh, it's holding a Citrus Berry, which uh, activates, but when you go below 50%, it's going to restore 30% of your HP. That's actually pretty good. Uh, this is also a Pokemon that's like known for holding like light clays and leftovers and i really did want to go the light clay but i actually changed up the move set at the last minute so we're actually going to talk about that when we get to the move set but we're going to get the evs first again we have our max moves uh prankster is the ability we're using today i think in the last grim snarl video i used i used the frisk one because i actually thought that was a really unique mechanic to showcase at the start of the format but yeah grim snarl it gives priority to a status move and priority is the same thing uh that's why like that's why like quick attack always goes first it's a priority move it gives a plus one one priority to all all status moves so moves that don't deal damage so uh you can see our ev spread here just a basic hp attack i feel we're afforded the luxury of going full in attack uh to maximize on this pokemon's above average attack because prankster can give us bulk ups and light screen if we know their opponent's going for special attacks just pop a light screen gives you double special d if you know they're gonna go for a physical attack just pop a bulk up get a plus one attack boost and a defense boost uh, we can always pop a bulk up, soak some damage, right? Get, maybe proc our Citrus Berry, go up to 70, 80%. Then proc a second bulk up uh, and use like a second one before they can hit us again. Then we're at plus two. Then from there, all we gotta do is Drain Punch back up to full. It's actually really, really good. I think the Citrus Berry plays really well here. Uh, Spirit Break could technically be like switched out for... Uh, Maybe be switched out for player off, but I don't like missing, and I really like that this can lower the target special attack. It's very similar to, to Trop Kick, uh, how that move is in Ultra Sun and Moon. I like this move a lot. It helps lower special attack. Uh, special attacks, like special Ds, were like, we're at our weakest, you know, because like we have the, we have, we have 85 base defense here, or 85, like the number defense. But I mean, Grim Snarl, like, I have bulk ups for days, right? And I can only use one light screen. I can use six bulk ups. I can only use one light screen. So having an attack that deals big damage and lowers their special attack is premium for this Pokemon. I think Grim Snarl is so underrated, and I'm so happy that a Pokemon that I actually like is viable. Uh, we're using an Adamant Grim Snarl. Uh, I think that there's value in changing a EV spread. I don't think you need this much attack. I think I could probably get away with going like. 150 and then putting the rest maybe in a little bit in speed uh, just to make sure that we outspeed the correct targets in a sticky web and then maybe putting the rest in like defenses to make it a little bit bulkier but overall this pokemon's a lot of fun and i know i'm talking about like i would change my eevee spreads and you, you guys are probably wondering oh if you change your eevee spreads then why don't you the reason being is i spend about like 15 16 hours a day already getting these teams and it's it's a lot harder to optimize eevee spread and run those calcs and do all that work for that uh, when you just have to do the very bare minimum to get the videos out. So like I said, these are things that this is the testing phase And then from here, this is where we can actually work on the teams for you know weeks months on end and then optimize them So even though I'm saying You know like oh man, I would totally change this or I would do this uh, That's giving you guys hints if you guys are gonna start doing that in your own games And you, I'm giving you guys a little bit of a head start so you guys can work on that without me I mean, I'm here if you guys have any questions, but you guys get the idea so up next, we're going to Gyarados. We've looked at this Gyarados a bunch of times. This Gyarados is so good. We're using the Walk and Berry, which uh, reduces the power of electric moves by 50%. So uh, popular electric Pokemon that are in most teams are Rotom. And Rotoms are relatively bulky, and they usually don't have that much special attack. Sometimes they'll have like, you know, 40 to 60 points in special attack or like just be modest nature because that's just enough to KO a Sweeper Gyarados, which is what we're running. So if we're running a walk and Berry, we can make it so they don't one-shot our Sweeper Gyarados. And if it's like a Rotom Heat that's just going for like a, a Thunderbolt on us, well, we're going to live and we're just going to one-shot it back with a Waterfall. Or if it's like a Rotom Wash or something, we can live, uh, set up a Dragon Dance that turn, then Dynamax the turn after that and go for like a max dark attack and just like one shot the rotom wash so it's like really really good i think walk berry is a unique item choice but as it stands uh i just didn't think there was any other items that i needed i mean i could put the what is it those boots that make it so i don't take stealth rocks damage that's okay uh i could put like a pinch berry like a like a figgy berry or something but as it stands i think this item's okay obviously you don't want to go things like mystic water those are pretty bad uh i could get away with a life orb here life orb's totally an item i could go here since we're running a sweeper set but overall i feel my team i wanted to be like i said anti-meta rotom is a very meta pokemon and we're trying to counter said meta so 
might as well go for the walk and bury and try and make some absolute plays running an adamant gyarados with intimidate this is one of the reasons why this pokemon is so good uh, you can come in lower their attack stat and then from there set one or two dragon dances and just absolutely sweep people up dragon dance gives you a plus one attack and speed boost ice fang is ice coverage for dragons you can also uh use the max hail storm and set hail so if like they have sashes if they have a focus sash with a sturdy ability and you know you want to get rid of that pokemon immediately you're going to go ice fang into it it's going to clock the sash hail's going to be able to finish them off if you expect them to bring in those pokemon maybe uh maybe KO the Pokemon before it with this uh with like the max hailstorm so the ice is already active uh when they bring out the Pokemon with the focus sash after that we got crunch and waterfall I kind of want to find a way to put a substitute on here I don't know which one of these I would cr I would cut because I said both like you know, crunch is really good against Rotom wash but ice Fang's really good against dragons and setting the weather so I think right now I'm still totally just fine with this I know I use a lot of Gyarados in this channel but it just goes to show that Pokemon is just that good. I mean, it's one of those Pokemon that's like, you gotta be this tall to ride. You gotta be this good to beat my Gyarados. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of people aren't. Gyarados is pretty busted. So uh, next Pokemon we're looking at is the Galvantula. So I think a lot of people are going to need a lot of clarification on how this Pokemon works. Uh, Galvantula is a historic sash user, which means uh, if it's going to get it one shot by an attack, it's going to live at one HP one time because it's literally a glass cannon. And uh, a very, very good lead. People are always going to expect uh, us to lead with the Galvantula. So in any game you play with this team, always know if they have a Galvantula check, if they have like a fire type or like a Pokemon that can like one shot Galvantula, you can expect them to lead with that just by you having this in your team. You don't have to lead Galvantula. But like if they have like a score bunny and you have a Galvantula, they're going to lead the score bunny. And you know what happens when, when they lead score bunny? You just don't lead Galvantula. You lead Gyarados and just win. Do you understand how that works? It's a little bit of a... A little bit of mind game, a little bit of bait. So, Galvantula is really, really good bait because people are going to leave with their Hippodons, uh, their ground types, their score bunnies. They're just going to try and one shot that thing because they do not want Sticky Web going off. Sticky Web says the user weaves a sticky net around the opponent's team, which lowers their speed stat upon switching into battle. So, like I said, all of our Pokemon have that kind of mid range speed tiering. And so, if we get off one Sticky Web, we're going to be able to outspeed everything. We're going to have speed control for the whole game. This lasts forever unless it gets removed. Now, it doesn't hit things that are flying or levitating. It's everything that makes contact with the ground. So it's not perfect, but it's a very, very solid speed control item. Like, imagine using a Thunder Wave that you had to only use once, and it lasted the whole game, no matter how many switches they did. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm sure one of the few Pokemon that can actually use Sticky Web correctly. We're going to look at our Eevee spread, though. We're running a hasty one. We're actually running a hasty one. I'm sorry, guys. I really wish I could... Uh, get you guys a timid one. I bred like three boxes of Avantulas, and I just don't have the Pokemon. I don't have a I don't have a male bug A group timid Pokemon. It took me a few hours to even just get this one, but it is relatively good like stats. I think it has I think it's like a five IV Pokemon. Um, but it's very, very good. Hasty's fine. As long as you're increasing your speed, Galvantula is totally fine. Uh, it has the max Dynamax, and like I said, you're running a Focus Ash anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you're a, you know, like a defense reduced nature. But the reason this Pokemon's really, really good, I like to think, is that it has Compound Eyes. This Pokemon's, uh, Pokemon's Compound Eyes boosts its accuracy by 30%. You know what that means? That means we don't have to use Thunderbolt or Volt Switch. We can go for the big boy Thunders, and a lot of people are like, oh, Thunder? I don't like missing. You can still miss the thunder, but it's like, I think, like a 97% chance to hit. Like, I'll take those odds. 110 base, 30% chance to para on the thunder, by the way. A lot of people would probably like to run thunder wave here, but I think, like, I might as well just get those 30% chance paras. Like, that's exactly what I'm talking about. We also have energy ball for coverage because, like I said, your opponents are going to totally be bringing those ground types. Uh, you know, it looks like energy ball thunder is redundant because, like, you don't... you. You already hit the waters, right? But it's just for ground types. Uh, just because you have such a problem hitting like hitting those ground types for any significant amount of damage. But if you guys want to put Thunder on this team, you know, you definitely can. There's just not many that good moves that Galvantula can get. And you'll be surprised how hard it hits. Uh, you'll be surprised how hard this Pokemon hits. Uh, last but not least, we have a Stab Bug Buzz. Note this is, this is a sound move. So if you guys' opponents are going for like substitutes and stuff like that, this will go through those substitutes. And it's a very, very underrated move. And it's a Stab move. So it's one of the strongest Bug Buzz users in the game. Galvantula is very, very good. Very high speed. Uh, decent special attack with great support. 
love this Pokemon, and uh, we are giving away, uh, you know, like, copies of them in the Discord. They're gonna be high Ivies, they're gonna be the wrong natures, but you guys get the idea. If you guys want a Galvantula, and you don't want to start from absolute scratch, hit up the Discord, and, uh, you know, just ask in the trade section uh, for a Galvantula. Someone will be able to hook you up. And we're not, they don't want anything in return, they just want you guys to have fun. Alright, so last but not least, we got our boy Como. o and Como o is holding a Throat Spray. This is an item that, like I, I talked about earlier, is normally on Toxtricity. Uh, that's because it says, uh, that the Throat Spray says, uh, raises special attack when a Pokemon uses a sound-based move. So, you know, that'd be like Overdrive or Boom Burst on Toxtricity. But, you know, Como has a lot of sound-based moves. Como o is like a sound-based Pokemon. Uh, Clanging Scales is a sound-based move. If I wanted to put Boom Burst on here, that's a sound-based move. And so it gives a plus one special attack upon using a sound base move. It's like actually really, really significant, especially if we already have a Clang or a Soul Boost. Uh, raises all its stats by one. Uh, so it's going to go a plus one to all of its stats by taking away 33% of your health. I kind of wanted to put like, you know, like a Leftovers or Citrus, but I really feel that like if I can set up the screens or like a light screen with my Grim Snarl, if I can intimidate going up with my Gyarados or like a uh, Sticky Web up with my Gavantula, I can come with Como. I can go get one clang off, right? I can just get that one clang off, and then from there, I Dynamax, I'm at plus two special attack, plus one on my other stats, and I can just one-shot every single one of my opponent's Pokemon um, because we have just such good coverage on our special attacking slots. Like, I want to show you, I want to show you our moves. We have Flash Cannon for Fairies and Rocks. We have Flamethrowers for Ferrothorns and Grass Types and, and Steel Types, and then we have Clanging Scales for literally everything else. It's a 110 base stab move, like... This Pokemon hits like an absolute truck. It's one of the best special attacker wall breakers in the game. And it has a great ability that we haven't even talked about yet. Its ability is bulletproof, but all of its abilities are good. And you have to actually respect all of the abilities on this Pokemon. It can have bulletproof, it can have soundproof, and it can have overcoat. So bulletproof says, protects Pokemon from some ball and bomb moves. So what are examples of ball and bomb moves? So uh, focus blast is actually one of those moves for some reason. Uh, historically, seed bomb. Gyro Ball, Sludge Bomb, uh, I think Sludge Bomb, yeah, Sludge Bomb, Shadow Ball. Are you starting to see, like, a connection? Like, let's actually go back and look at the team. Let's look at the whole team. What are some of our weaknesses? Oh, man, Shadow Ball. It would suck to eat a Shadow Ball on our Chandelier. Just kidding, go into Como. Oh, It would suck to eat a Focus Blast on our Double Well. Just kidding, go into Como. Oh, get a free Switch. You know how important that is? Uh, what, like, what's a Pokemon that could potentially, like, give Como a little bit of problems? Like, Ferrothorn? I mean, depends on if you have, like, if you, I mean, we have Flamethrower, but you know what I mean? Uh, we can switch in on a Gyro Ball. We can switch in on a Seed Bomb. Are you starting to see how this is actually really, really good to have the, uh, Bulletproof ability? Because one of the good things about Bulletproof is all of his Como's abilities are so polar opposite that you have to, like, scout for which one it is before you can do anything. So, Bulletproof just existing as an ability means your opponent's not going to go for those moves on a Como o just because you might have it. And vice versa for the Soundproof ability. Soundproof says it blocks all sound-based moves, so they're not going to be hyper-voicing. They're not going to be clanging, scaling, or snarling, or overdriving, or boom-bursting. If you have a Como, just based on the fact that you could potentially have uh, that ability that stops them, and no one wants to just throw away a game on a guess unless they absolutely have to so it really just blocks so many moves from existing uh just by just by having a como in your team that's one of the things como brings to the table it's one of like the buffs that you get for using a como -o. and last but not least its ability overcoat which is also very good blocks like uh you know the hail and like the sandstorms like it's actually a really really good ability in very specific formats i think it's the worst one out of the three because that one you can actually like scout for it because like if there's a tranter on the board from previous uh, turns, or like uh, you know, like Sandstream or Hail, they can see you're not taking damage, so they know that you're not bulletproof or soundproof, which means they can start using those moves again. But uh, yeah, I think bulletproof's actually really good, and I'm really happy with this choice. So uh, we looked at the, oh yeah, Amaran and Timid, gotta go fast, guys. You gotta go fast. EV spread is full special attack, full speed. There is a list of all of these EVs. If there's anything I'm forgetting, EVs, items, attacks. Uh, everything natures all that stuff is linked in the description of this video in a paste bin you guys can check it out it's in like the third line so como o timid it's so good i love como it's one of my favorites i think como is one of my favorites but yeah that is that is the team i hope you enjoyed it guys please as always let me know if you have any questions in the comments below i love reading all the comments guys it's my favorite thing to do every single day is read and reply to every single one of your guys's comments and you know i reply to every single comment so no matter how insignificant you think your comment might be 
I like seeing it, even if it's like an insult. I I'll, I I could take a couple insults uh, as long as you know it helps me actually get better. So uh, thank you guys for watching as always. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Hit up the Discord. Hit up the Twitch stream. Hit up all the other social media things, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Thank you.